Right, good afternoon everyone. It's two o'clock and welcome to the Planning Committee on the 4th of July. Um, we have some members in the public, so welcome to you also. We are live streaming, so please be minded that we are. Um, could everyone in the chamber please make sure they switch their mobile phones off? Now that we have some new members in the committee, they're not always used to the, to the drill at the start of the meeting. Okay. Um, first of all, I am County Councillor Ruth Edwards, Chair of the Planning Committee, and to my right... Uh, County Councillor Peter Clark. Uh, Robert Tranter, the Monitoring Officer and Legal Advisor to this committee. Philip, Philip Thomas, Development Services Manager with Monmouthshire County Council. Andrew Jones, Senior Development Management Officer. Uh, Richard Williams, Democratic Services Officer. Right, thank you all very much for that, so everybody is aware who's who, and especially those that are viewing us. Um, any declarations of interest, please? Uh, no declarations, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, we've got, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, so, sorry, sorry I, I, yes, I, it does say the first on the agenda, apologies for absence, but I'm well aware that we have no apologies of, ap of uh, absence, so we've got a full compliment today. So declarations of interest, and I believe we've got one councillor who has a declaration to make. Thank you. Councillor Feekin. Thank you. Declaration of interest for items 4.2 and 4.3. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you, Rob? Sorry, sorry Chairman. No, no, what, what, what's the reason for the declaration, please, Councillor Feekin? Already seen them and already considered them in Monmouth Town Council. Oh, and my okay. former role as a town councillor. Okay, okay, okay. So you'll uh, leave the meeting um, when they are being debated? I'll, I'll leave the chamber. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll go on now to the accuracy of the meeting, of the last planning meeting. Page one. Page two. Page three. And page 8, page 9, page 10, and page 11. Move on, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Higgins. And do you have a seconder for approval of the minutes? Show of hands from everyone, please. Right, thank you. I shall sign those at the end of the meeting. Um, now, the applications, the first one on the agenda is in Abergavenny Lentilio Patholi. Uh, I think that's you, Phil. That is 00537. Andrew, Andrew's just going to briefly introduce. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yep, members will recall they visited this yesterday. These are two holiday lets uh, at Wernde Farm. Um, members will recall during the site meeting yesterday, uh, a number of concerns were raised with the, the level of market information that had been provided with the application. The application is, is to remove existing planning conditions that would allow the holiday lets to be used as permanent places of residence. Uh, and as I say, members were concerned that the justification and the scope of the marketing to justify that um, was insufficient. Um, I think as officers on reflection, we would sort of concur with that. And therefore, uh, it is put to, to members to defer the application uh, for further marketing uh, work to be done and a formal assessment to be provided to justify uh, the building as a self-contained dwelling. So that, that would be the recommendation to members for deferral. Right, thank you, Andrew. Would somebody like to put forward? Uh, Councillor uh, Feekins proposes that we defer it. You have a seconder. Mm -hmm. Councillor Higgins, a show of hands for deferral for that application. So that's carried, Right, thank you very much. We now go to the second item on the agenda. This is on page 17 to 22, Osbaston, Monmouth, and Councillor Feekins has just left the chamber. Andrew, is that you again? No, it's, uh, yeah. that's, that's me. It's okay, <laughs> okay. They'll have to swap seats and then I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, yes, there's an application we visited yesterday, so it should be fresh in members' minds. Um, that's the lower part of the garden. It's winter time, so it's quite... Uh, a contrast to how we saw it yesterday was uh, a lot more vegetation there. That's looking 
back up the site uh, where the lower of the dwellings, two dwellings in the garden would be proposed. So there'd be one in this sort of area here and then one further up. Uh, perhaps doesn't do it justice to show the size of the garden there. Uh, and that's the big Wellingtonia tree on the left hand side which will be retained along with the vegetation on the edge of the site which backs onto Berryfield uh, uh, Road or Avenue uh, to the left hand side there where that property is. So if we just look at the, the plan that puts it in context so, uh, context, so that's the parent dwelling Kai Elga there which is off Highfield Road which is relatively narrow with no pavement. So yeah, that's the uh, Kyle gauged in, in uh, blue there and the application site, which you can see is a very large, extensive part of the rear curtilage of Kyelga. And then that's showing, if I can just move over and show you where that is. So that's Kyelga, which is two meters higher than the proposed plot here. And we, we could see that the land sort of fell away there and also fell back in that direction. And Berryfield up to the north was at a higher, higher level as well and the land slowly slopes that way as well uh, downwards. Um, so plot A, uh, plot B would be two metres below the finished floor level of, uh, uh, of Kai Elk, which is a very substantial detached property, mature property with large trees, a beautiful garden with large uh, mature trees within it and shrubs. And then similarly this property is almost like a hierarchy here, plot A would be two metres in terms of finished floor level below plot B. And there'd be a shared access, gravel access, coming into this sort of communal area where there'd be turning facilities for, for plot B with parking here and uh, parking for plot A. They would parking for, for, for a maximum of three cars would comply with the council's adopted parking parking guidelines. Um, so there's been various concerns from neighbours regarding uh, increased traffic, overlooking, loss of privacy, overbearing. Um, having assessed that, we think that the garden is large and can accommodate two dwellings. Um, it is only outlined, so a lot of the devil is in the detail that would come through and reserve matters. So things like location of windows would be fixed then at reserve matters stage, and we could control that to reduce any loss of privacy to adjoining gardens. There is a vegetable plot over the, to, to, the, uh, to that side, and I believe um, uh, the, the owner of that is going to speak shortly concerning the application. Uh, it is the top end of that uh, owner's garden. We feel in this instance a degree of, uh, a degree of overlooking would be acceptable, bearing in mind it's not the immediate uh, large amenity area that they have behind their house. So we think uh, that, that, that could be uh, uh, accommodated in, in this instance without significantly affecting amenity. Uh, but as I say, the, the window positions would come at reserve matters stage. There'd be a condition to ensure that the trees are protected uh, there'd need to be a surface water drainage condition added as well to ensure that runoff is kept to sort of greenfield flows as it is at the moment uh, and then to, to ensure that that drainage ditch is kept clear as well as part of the development uh, which is running along this part of the development. So all in all, uh, while sympathising with neighbours' concerns, understanding that the loss of a, a large garden uh, is... is um, not so much regrettable, but is is is, is just a fact of uh, modern modern times, really, um, in in terms of needing more housing uh, for for the population. Uh, we would recommend approval. Uh, it's compliant with policy, and uh, we think that the the amount of traffic that it would uh, it would increase by across uh, along Highfield Road and the the net road network generally would would be minimal compared to what what is there at the moment. So uh, we would recommend approval for the application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. I do believe we have the neighbour who wishes to speak today. You've registered to speak? Right. Sorry? Yeah, the local member will speak. Which way are we doing it? Oh, right. Uh, sorry, we'll take the local member first. Uh, I always thought it was... Sorry, could you um, state your... Uh, name councillor for those that are viewing anyway so they're clear as to who the local member is speaking. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, this is Richard Roden, uh, local member for Dixton with Osbaston. Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity to share some local knowledge with the planning committee, hopefully to aid their decision making regarding this application. 
I'll cover three areas, uh, flooding and drainage, which the officers has already mentioned, sewage, and the scale of the proposed development. Firstly, flooding and drainage. The area is at risk of summer flash floods, as well as in wintertime, possibly due to the heavy clay soil and the degree of the slope. This is a significant concern. My house is located about 100 metres from Kyalga and it has a similar aspect. I have personal experience of a flash flood, which fortunately missed my house, but saturated others both above and below it. It is noticeable that of the Highfield Road objectors, there's only one objector from above Kyalga and five situated below. All of those objectors mentioned the issue of drainage and flooding. The houses on Agincourt Road, which also overlook this site, didn't make any objections to the application whatsoever. I don't believe this is nimbyism. I think that this is actually a real and evident risk to the planning permission in that area. I think that a SUDS system may not be able to cope with the effect of a summer drought. Uh, sorry, a summer <laughs> flash flood. And worryingly, modern houses abutting the site, as in the photograph shown earlier, also have drainage issues. This aspect needs to be considered carefully. Perhaps a soil survey needs to be undertaken prior to uh, an approval to assess SUDS. What measures to assess this issue, if needed, uh, need to be decided ahead of giving the approval. Secondly, sewage. Local residents inform me that a sewage pipe that runs under Highfield Road is below adopted standard and was initially refused for adoption by Welsh Water, but they subsequently actually took it on. As K. Elgar is on a septic tank and the proposed new dellings are below the road level, three questions spring to mind. Can the current sewage system cope with the addition of three new dwellings attached to it? It has in the past broken. 18 houses uh, had the sewage supply uh, or extraction removed from them for a few days while it was fixed. Presumably a pump system would also be required for the new dwellings. The effect of a mechanical or electrical failure could result in another episode of fluid uh, sewage release which would affect their houses again. Uh, there was a, uh, an issue of a release of sewage sometime in the past. Finally, scale of development. Local residents have said that they are unhappy with the scale of the development and given the presence of the much-loved Wellingtonia tree and its yet-to-be-determined root system, uh, which needs a British standard assessment, and the number of other trees, the tightness of the plots from a parking perspective, the removal of an appropriate amount of amenity space for a building of the scale of Kyalga, I think that they would find it more acceptable if the applicant returned with planning for a single dwelling rather than two dwellings. <coughs> Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Reid, and you do also have two minutes later on if you wish to sum up. Thank you. The local neighbour, I believe, wishes to speak. Please state your name and you have four minutes. Okay, thank you. I'm Kay Potts and I'm representing the protesters. Highfield Road, road outside Kai Elga is steep, narrow and without pavement. Healthy living encourages walking. Mums with young children, toddlers and pushchairs walk to the local junior school. Older children walk to the local three senior schools. Elderly people walk to the bus stop, keeping active and helping to reduce environmental traffic pollution by not using their cars. It's already hazardous for pedestrians, especially at peak school and work times. There's a tremendous amount of traffic up and down the hill, generally at a fair speed at this point. The number of traffic movements in and out and up and down that will be generated daily by the allocated new parking spaces 
and the amount of vehicles of all sizes involved in the development of the site can only make the potential for danger worse. This overdevelopment of the plot is putting lives at risk. Who will take responsibility when the accident happens? The ground around Highfield Road, as we've already heard, is very heavy clay. Rainwater runs down a surface water from Agincourt Road near the top of the hill, down over the fields and into the garden of Kyalga, which is acting like a giant sponge. Some water finds an exit out through the gardens and onto Highfield Road, taking debris with it and blocking gutters and drains. The water also fills the field ditch, which runs at the end of the garden at Kyalga, through three other gardens and down under Highfield Road, if the drain can deal with it. It appears from the plan that one of the houses would be very close to this field dish, ditch. We question implications for flooding to this house due to this and the intended lowering of the slope. It's very concerning to householders to watch a sheet of water advancing down our gardens, putting our houses at risk. We have already experienced flooding of garages, flooding beside back doors of houses and standing water on lawns. There are numerous springs in the area and during one wet period, water in my garden was forced under pressure above ground to some feet in the air. With the proposed overdevelopment of the plot, a large area of the garden of Kay Elga will disappear under hard surface, either housing, car parking, hard standing or extended driveway. The water that then cannot be observed but absorbed by the land will need to go somewhere else, but where? The land cannot cope now. This can only be exacerbated by future development. This development is putting our houses at risk of flooding. Who takes responsibility when this happens? We note from the plan that not all of the trees that would be affected by the development are shown. It's not clear which trees, if any apart from the listed one, are intended to be kept. When you paid the site visit, it looked as if the trees provided good cover. It should be noticed that many of them are deciduous and therefore coverage is heavily reduced during several months of the year. The garden is surrounded on two sides by mature field hedges. It appears that the intended houses are very close to these hedges and trees, which must put them sig under significant pressure during and after the development. This all has a si significant knock-on effect for the current and future ecology of the garden and the surrounding area. We regularly hear an owl at night, bats hang out in the trees, and we see and hear woodpeckers pecking. Kestrels fly above the field, and we have large numbers of the more usual species of birds. There are many small mammals, including hedgehogs and moles, and it's a wildlife haven for bees and other insects. This development is putting the ecology at risk. We all have a responsibility to maintain and sustain the wildlife Could you for please our children, wind up, children, please? and for the world, rather than building on every potential site. Who will take responsibility when this fragile balance is destroyed? Thank you very much indeed. I believe we have the applicant's agent who now wishes to speak as well. And please state your name when you have four minutes also. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Spencer from BS Technical Services who have uh, produced this application for the client. Uh, taking on board uh, Richard Redden's comments, um, flooding and drainage, um, every site sometimes has summer flash floods if this site acts as a sponge, then why is everybody concerned about the possibility of flooding? If the houses are actually put onto that site, it's fair to say that all the external areas, including car parking, will have to be permeable, as is the British standard now. Uh, the sewage, um, this is controlled by Welsh Water in Highfield Road, and um, as we understand it, that there is sufficient capacity for new dwellings to be uh, connected. The pump system used to raise sewage from a lower level to a higher level is well documented and used in building now. As everyone might know, down the bottom end of Osbaston, there's a fairly big pumping station on the uh, houses down by Osbaston Road. 
and to my knowledge over the last 20 years that's never failed. Um, regarding scale of the property, um, with respect, this is not part of this application as the only thing uh, to be considered is the principle of the development and also the access. The scale will be considered as part of the reserve matters. Nevertheless, if you look at the plan, uh, we, I have tried to make sure that I've shown what could fit on there, what any future developer might put on there is controlled by the root protection area of the trees. For, for knowledge, or your knowledge, um, if you take the damage of a tree, you're not allowed to build within 15 times the damage of the tree. And on my plan, there are certain dotted lines on there which indicate the root protection area of all the trees on the site. The only one being with the TPO is the Wellingtonia, and the plan is that all the trees that are shown on there are to be protected. Uh, traffic movements. Uh, highways have stated that the proposed development will uh, not affect the local road network adversely. And regarding the deciduous trees and hedges cover, uh, the development is close but away from the root spread of the trees and it is all to be, to be designed to our agricultural standard and there's a report in the file to, to uh, commensurate that. Thank you. I just re ask you to uh, approve the scheme. Thank you very much, Mr Spencer. Well, most members here today were ob obviously with us yesterday at the site, um, so I'll wel welcome comments now from members of the committee. Councillor Higginson. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Yeah, we were there yesterday. It's quite an, quite an extensive site. Two properties on, the, on, on that site, for my part, um, are, are very acceptable. And uh, I, don't sec I don't accept there'll be uh, any excessive visual impact on neighbouring properties um, because there's, there's a fair amount of uh, screening around there. And I don't consider it to be... Uh, uh, unduly impact, uh, say, on the, on the new neighbours. Um, in relation to traffic on that road, it's a narrow road, but two more properties on, on, on that development is not going to cause any uh, uh, undue uh, nuisance, I, I don't consider. And if, 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 it's, if, for example, it's two cars per property, I mean, that's a, a, a very minor number of the, of the total number of uh, vehicles that, are, that, that can use that road from the neighbouring properties up either side of, of, that, uh, of that house. So, for me, I, I don't see any reason why we can't uh, approve of this uh, development. Thank you, Councillor Higginson, Councillor Howard, then Councillor Blakebre, then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, the, the, I think the f first point I want to make is to some extent I agree with Jim and I, I don't see that there's a, an issue with being able to fit two dwellings onto the site. I do um, wonder if there could be a bit more detail about uh, the general presumption we have against back garden development and I'd like to know a bit more about uh, why the officers feel that the characteristics of this site would make that more acceptable than it might at, at, at others. And the second one then is, is about flooding that both the local member and the local resident brought up. Uh, there's some reference to it in the report, um, Paris 5.5.2 and 5.6.1, and it said that flooding isn't an issue. Obviously, service water has been, been mentioned. Councillor Road mentioned the flash summer floods. And I note that on the, the new development advice maps, the NRW host now, that the back end of the site, and particularly where the lowest dwelling is going to be located, is identified as having low and medium surface water risk. Um, although Phil referred to potential for a, a, a condition to control that, I am then concerned about the increase in, in impermeable service on the site and wonder if we want to have a bit more detail about how any condition could be expected to deal with those surface water issues, and particularly since NRW haven't been consulted, as it appears on the report. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Uh, Councillor Debbie Blakeburn, next, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I find this really difficult um, when you're looking at um, building in gardens. We had an application last month, and then this month we've got two applications. So when you're looking at legislation, it is true that legislation would say there is absolutely no reason why um, we cannot build in, in gardens. Um, it's in the LDP. 
um, it is capable of accommodating um, two uh, properties um, and it's a brownfield site. A little bit concerned, I know that England is a slightly different definition. Um, I mean, uh, the, the brownfield site is classed uh, as the same as a, a, a derelict factory when gardens for me aren't anything like that because particularly in towns, they say they're the green lungs of our towns. Um, and I think um, Kay highlighted um, the, um, they improve air quality, controlling air temperature, flood risk, and provides a haven for wildlife. So they are precious areas to, to preserve. If therefore, um, I, I think this is something we need to challenge. Perhaps Momisha needs to look at what they want Momisha to look in 10 years time and, and we need some sort of principles guidelines on building in, uh, in the gardens. If we were then mindful of um, saying yes to this, I think two properties are too many in that area because it's not just the square footage of the property, but it's the domestic infrastructure around it. So it's the parking, uh, it's the patios, uh, it's the garden sheds, it is the drive, and actually they would leave very little greenery uh, at the end of it. If we were mindful to, to, to put this through, again, um, we'd absolutely right. You've got to get that balance, preserving gardens, but also we do, there is a need for housing uh, in Monmouthshire, but there's a need for uh, affordable housing. There's a need for housing for the elderly um, as they downsize, and there's a need for housing for new families to come in. So there isn't a need for further four or five bedroom houses. So I'd be very mindful of um, the housing in the garden to meet our needs and not, if you like, the, the needs of the pocket of the developer, really. Um, I, would, I would be saying two is too many. I'd be a lot more comfortable of one uh, being in that area. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Blake. Brad, Councillor Louise Brown, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I do have a concern about this uh, development from uh, listening to um, the neighbours and also listening to the uh, local councillor. We have already been told from another councillor that this is at a low or medium risk of flooding. But <clears throat> in fact, if you look at the local development plan, um, there is actually a policy S12 which refers to avoid the siting of inappropriate development in areas at risk of flood flooding. I've done a search of this agenda and nowhere can I find policy S12 in it and I think it's important that we look at that and there are other references within the local development plan to ensure that new development takes account of the risk of flooding both existing and in the future that's uh, point 12 under um, sus building sustainable communities and also that's on page uh, 46 of the local development plan there is also a policy EP2 on page uh, 143 of the local development plan that again uh, mentions about um, uh, concern about uh, surface waters and so forth. Again, it's mentioned in 2.49 of the local development plan and uh, basically, again, to ensure that there is not inappropriate development in areas of risk of flooding. Now, obviously, the, it, we've already been told it's low and medium risk. I don't know because I haven't actually looked at the NRW site, but medium risk means that there is a risk, and our policy S12 um, doesn't actually talk about medium or low risk, it just said in areas at risk of flooding. So I think it is something that we need to consider. I'm also concerned about the scale of the uh, development. I appreciate that an outline planning uh, doesn't necessarily look at this particular aspect, but I would be more comfortable with one dwelling there because then there would be further land to actually uh, soak up this uh, obvious water problem that they've got in that particular area. The, the properties slope downwards and, um, you know, so do these, uh, so does this, this land, which means that obviously the concern is for the houses down, down below. So I would be more in favour of um, a particular, I'm not particularly keen on garden grabbing in any event, but I think that um, uh, one would be better, but we have to decide 
on the basis of what's before us. So I would recommend a, rep a proposal of refusal based on various aspects of policy DES1 um, and the particular aspects of that I think um, there's various set, there's a couple of um, wordings within that would, that would be appropriate, including I think one that's marked L, and also um, policy S12 and various references in the local development plan um, in in terms of not um, citing properties in inappropriate development in areas of a risk of flooding, and I think that this property could um, increase the possible possibly not with one extra property, but certainly with two, um, because the surface area of that garden is no longer available to soak in, th soak in um, any water that's coming through. We ha there's no details in this application. I mean, I think the agent mentioned about permeable uh, car parking, but I don't think that would necessarily resolve the issue. So my recommendation is a refusal, and I don't know whether anybody is prepared to second that on the basis of policy DS1 and policy S12. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Is it worth the... Uh, uh, on a couple of yes. those uh, issues. In terms of um, Councillor Howard's um, query about whether there's a presumption against development in, or backland development, development in gardens, there isn't. Uh, each case is looked at on its merits. I think there's, there's more stringent uh, policies in England, but uh, as um, uh, Councillor Blakeborough pointed out, the uh, gardens are considered to be brownfield in Wales, so they're an opportunity to, ve to develop in a sustainable manner. Uh, so uh, I think we, we've got to get uh, uh, this idea of garden grabbing out of our minds because it's, it's, it's an opportunity and see it as potentially an opportunity. It won't be appropriate all, 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 on all occasions, but potential opportunity to develop and, and add much needed housing to, to the areas. Um, in terms of hard surfacing and, uh, and surface water, uh, it is low to medium risk. Uh, we do consult highways who have a role in terms of surface water flooding rather than NRW, who are concerned with river uh, uh, watercourse flooding and, and sea flooding. Um, so they would be the appropriate authority to comment on that. They haven't objected to this application, but uh, it's appropriate to condition that surface water is controlled via condition, uh, given that we know there are some albeit low risk issues in the area. So that is why we've suggested a condition to control uh, runoff from the site to ensure that it is greenfield runoff uh, so that the situation is made no worse than it is at the moment. So that would mean that porous surfacing, which let, if it's done properly, is uh, which we will control by a condition, means that the, the runoff from this site would be no worse than having it as, as, as a green space with plants. There's also a landscaping condition which would have to be approved as part of the reserve matters. So it gives you the opportunity to actually increase planting, particularly along the periphery, which is a concern not only in terms of privacy, in terms of neighbours, but also a help to increase the absorption level of the site with increased planting. So I think those sort of issues can be accommodated by the conditions we're looking to safeguard and assure the community with, and also then allow much needed residential development. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that explanation, Phil. I have now Phil Murphy, then Roger Harris, Maureen Powell, uh, Councillor Davis, and then Councillor Judd at the back, and then Councillor Dovey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And um, I think I share a lot of the concerns that have uh, been expressed uh, already. Um, I think it's regrettable that um, we're looking to put two uh, properties on this site, but let's stick with the application that's before us rather than speculating as to what might come in reserve matters because uh, there may well be one that comes forward rather than two. If there are two, um, then uh, I would suggest that in addition to uh, a condition about permeable services, uh, we also condition the fact that uh, property two, which would be the one in the L shape, the uh, the back one, the the lower of them, um, yeah. No, the other one, the other one. Um, I appreciate that it's two meters uh, in roof height below the uh, first of the properties, um, but um, it is apparent that there would be a need to build up the back garden 
to accommodate that property if it's ever built. Uh, I would suggest that it would be far better from a neighbourhood, uh, a, a neighbour's amenity point of view, if it was actually dropped probably a metre, um, that the garden could easily uh, accommodate that. It would be far less obtrusive uh, and could, could go some way towards uh, surface water uh, mitigation. The other suggestion I would make is that, and I think there's plenty of room, um, in reserve matters, we look at some sort of attenuation uh, system. Um, we can easily put some sort of suds uh, procedure there, even if it's a French drain at the uh, at the end of the uh, property to stop any uh, additional surface water that might not be trapped by uh, permeable services uh, flooding into neighbouring gardens. Um, so that may well hold up and help to uh, dissipate that. Um, as regards the other objections, I note that all the statutory uh, 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 agencies and our own are satisfied with it. Um, the rest of it, um, and I could go on for quite a bit about my own feelings about it, but they would all be dealt with in under reserve matters anyway. So um, just to sum up, uh, second property, if it ever comes forward, I think it should be lower. There should be surface water attenuation or at least a fence drain to stop uh, water egress onto uh, other properties. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. Now I have Councillor Roger Harris. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we go back one on the uh, screen, please, Phil? Uh, uh, right, OK. And we can now see... Um, at the bottom, I understand what Phil is 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 saying there uh, regarding the um, uh, building number two, um, but it looks it's down the bottom of uh, uh, that other house's uh, garden, and quite honestly, it wouldn't do any harm rather than build up the uh, platform to uh, to dig it in there. There's nothing immediately uh, overlooking there. Um, but anyway, uh, it's, it's good to see that actual uh, plan there and put it, into, uh, uh, put it into context. The important thing is, with this application, it's an access-only uh, uh, consideration, and we look like we're going through all sorts of possibilities that may happen um, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the future, and I don't think we can consider that. The application is for access only um, at the moment. What comes after is uh, going to uh, uh, come out with uh, reserved matters. The other thing is that... I'm a bit like a gramophone record, and this keeps coming up time and time again about the size of plots, the size of houses going on uh, on plots, and I keep saying, please let us, as a planning committee, get together and put some ideas forward about what we want to see. Uh, but it never it never happens. This is an enormous plot, and in all honesty, when you compare it to some of the other plots that we've seen, the two houses and outline as shown on that plot fit in there without any problem whatsoever. And we've just got to be honest about that. But that's not what we're considering at the moment. We're considering whether or not uh, the access is, is okay and that, that road can uh, support should the, these developments be built, uh, the number of vehicles coming out of there. All other problems, if they are problems or considerations, will come up um, if we uh, agree uh, this this afternoon. If we don't agree it this afternoon, then uh, you know, we're going to be in an awful lot of uh, uh, trouble down the line by uh, uh, inspectors. So... Uh, uh, that's all I really need to say. But we really must have this discussion. We know that it's perfectly legal and viable 
within this county for us to so-called garden grab, which I hate the uh, term. It's happened all over the, uh, the county and it will continue happening all over the uh, county. We need to get some criteria about what at the bottom line, we will not agree to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Harris. And I, Sorry, I, Chair, can I just clarify? Yeah, um, yeah Councillor Harris is right. We are looking at partic pr uh, particularly the, the access in terms of that detail. You are looking also at the principle of two dwellings in that location. So, um, And there are what we call scale parameters put in which are considered at this stage. So they have indicated the maximum height of the lower one, which you're more concerned about, would be 7.75 metres, and the upper one would be 7.45 metres. So um, if you are concerned particularly about the scale parameter of the height of the lower one at 7.75 metres, if you can give us some direction on that, we can go back to the developer, subject to perhaps agreement, if you are minded to approve, with the panel to reduce the height of that scale parameter, and then agree it via the panel if you're if you're minded to approve that the overall application. So we could reduce that from what Councillor Murphy suggested to, to six six point seven five metres. I don't know if you can give us some guidance on that. We can go back to them. Yeah, I fully agree with that. I think it's it's very plausible to dig it in there to lower it down a great deal. Uh, Councillor uh, Maureen Powell, next, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, two things. One is, uh, what is the area of the footprint of the two houses in proportion to the area of the whole of the garden area of that l shape because that's got a bearing because there's still been awful lot left and the other is um the applicant tells us that um well we could see on the plans there are several trees that are going to be retained trees absorb far more water than ever grass or flowers or ordinary flower beds do um, uh, this, is, this is one reason why you have all the flooding out in, in, in South America where they've cut them all down. Trees absorb a tremendous lot of water, so as long as several of those large trees are retained, I think the, the water problem will be alleviated. Thank you for stating that, Councillor uh, Powell. I fully agree with that. Councillor Alan Davis, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, one thing that was obvious to all of us that visited the site was that the ground was very spongy, which says to me that there's a lot of water contained within that, that garden. Uh, having said that, we are not here to go into too much detail, but I, I, I think, as Councillor Murphy said, we need, there would be, need to be remedial measures. We would need to be satisfied at a further stage that things have been put in place which would alleviate that problem. But there is no doubt in my mind that there is a water retention issue within that site. Thank you. Thank you. It, it was very mossy, but then if you get a lot of trees, and there was a lot of trees there, you don't get the sun into it, and then that, that will, and moss is a dreadful thing in a garden, whether it's wet or not. It, it's other factors that um, come into that. Uh, Councillor Becker, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, most of what I was going to say has already been uh, said or asked. The only thing I'd say in terms of guidance of the height, I'd be a lot happier seeing something that was single story in that. Um, foot of the L there rather than uh, two story. Other than that, it's all been said. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Dovey next, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm rather persuaded to hear a little more about the legal points that uh, uh, Louise has uh, raised at the front, and that's made me think a little bit about this particular uh, application. I, I want to make a couple of general points, really. Um, there is no doubt about it with the sort of infilling that goes along uh, at the, that we're doing at the moment, there are going to be water problems for it. I mean, the, the comment was made uh, here, it's only another two properties. And then there'll be another uh, application for another two properties infilling, and then it, uh, but it's only another two properties. This is what goes on all, all the time. I... I can give you an example of what has happened. We had at one stage in um, Chepstow flooding in the bulwark. Who's ever heard of flooding in the bulwark? But the fact of the matter, we had it. And when there was an aerial photograph taken of what had happened in the bulwark, it, the flooding was coming up about because the council houses, they were getting rid of their gardens 
and it was to park cars. All the greenery had gone for that whole area. The principle is the same. If you build houses on land that was already green and did accept the water, then you are creating, you are creating a problem. And I am concerned, uh, concerned about this because it's creeping and creeping and creeping. Phil made the point that in England they're more stringent about this problem than we are here. Yeah, they are, but the reason they are, they're about 25 years ahead of us because they were going on infilling land willy-nilly, infilling land willy-nilly, and they, they started to have the same problems um, up there, and it was due to the fact that it, the green areas that had naturally soaked up water had, had been or were being removed at a remarkable state. You had the state agents flying up and down in helicopters looking at big houses, and that was the thing that was going on. So I, I, I'm aware that this can happen. And the other point was made here, uh, there is a need for this, much needed housing. Well, I don't think these fall into much needed housing brackets. The, I've can. Uh, if you were going to stand up and say it is a business opportunity or it's needed for my family or something like that, um, then that would be fine. But I'm not prepared to accept that these are much needed houses. They're certainly not that. If they were being built as affordable houses, you could make that point. So I have a number of issues that I am uh, I, I, sorry, I, I believe we have to correct you there because there is a contribution to affordable housing if these houses are built of a considerable amount of money actually. So, and when you say not need of housing, we are always in desperate need of any type of housing. So I think we need a correction there and deal with the application that we've got in front of us today. Uh, 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 could I just come back on that? I'm aware of the contribution that is being made, but and that is fine. If you were saying, though, that they are much-needed houses, that is different. If you're saying they, we, we benefit from a contribution as a result of these two houses being uh, built, then that is fine. I would argue that they are not necessarily much-needed houses, but we get a contribution from it, which I agree with, if, if they are built. Thank you, Councillor Cadovi. I'll now take Councillor Blakeborough, Councillor Murphy, and then Councillor Brown. Uh, it's really just clarification. Um, the application seeks outline planning consent for the erection of two dwellings. So if we allow this to go through, we are saying we are looking for two dwellings, and I'm uncomfortable with the two dwellings. Legislation, there is no reason to say no. I disagree with the legislation, but there is no reason to say no, and we've got to deal with this but I would be looking towards one dwelling and also having one dwelling could answer some of the issues around flooding, sewerage overload and traffic concerns as well. So I'd be looking towards um, uh, giving outline planning permission for one dwelling. Thank you, Councillor Blake. Brett, Councillor Murphy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've got a great deal of sympathy with what Councillor Blake has just said, but that's not what's, what's in front of us. Um, so, uh, in an attempt to uh, bring this to a conclusion, reluctantly, because as I said before, I don't like it, but um, I uh, move uh, approval uh, subject to what I said about uh, the um, second property. Uh, my guidance that uh, the officer was looking for would be that that should be down a, a metre or as, as much as is practical around that. Uh, and I would like to see that um, additional attenuation. I'm sure that reserve matters can can uh, sort that, that out. So um, to move uh, progress, uh, Chair, um, I propose that we uh, that we uh, agree. Uh, quickly, first, uh, could, uh, Councillor Brown, is there anything you wish to add before we take the vote? Uh, yes, thank you. Sorry, I was. I thought I was the next person to speak um, prior to the seconding. Um, what, what I would like to say is, obviously, the policies are different in in, in England in relation to um, garden grabbing. But I don't think that the officers have actually 
answered the questions that I've raised in relation to the policies we do have which could be used here. And I think I should stress that we've got policy DS1 and we've got policy S12. Now, just to read a bit, bit of policy D, DS1, which I think is relevant. Um, that's A, which says, ensure a safe, secure, pleasant and convenient environment that is accessible to all members of the community, supports the principles of community safety and encourages walking and cycling. The neighbours have mentioned about uh, community safety, but the next point is B, contribute towards a sense of place whilst ensuring that the amount of development and, is, and its intensity is compatible with existing uses. C, respect the existing form, scale, siting, massing materials and layout of its settings and any neighbouring qual quality buildings. L, ensure that existing residential areas of uh, are characterised by high standards of privacy and spaciousness are protected from overdevelopment and insensitive or inappropriate infilling. Now, basically, what I'm arguing is if you look at that plan, you can see in the north areas there are some areas of properties that there have been some extra properties. But if we're looking, but that's a cul de sac type of environment. If you actually look at the plan where that property is sited, all the dwellings in that area are basically one, one house and one garden. So on that particular street, there, there is not um, any um, of this type of infilling. And I'm talking about overdevelopment, which comes back to the point that's already been made about the preference for one property in that uh, area rather than two because of the concerns about the risk of flooding. Also, in relation to policy S112, the officer hasn't answered my question because it actually says avoid the siting of inappropriate development in areas at risk of fl flooding. Now, siting must be where in effectively in simple terms where the house is plonked now basically even in outline you are are in effect looking at siting so we've actually got policies in our local development plan and in various points that we could use if we're not happy about this development and i don't see why we aren't actually using them it's, it's not a question of garden grabbing it's a question of the policies we've already got. Also in relation to the point that was made about the trees, I fully uh, agree that trees soak up water, but so does land. And the fact is, is there are currently trees there, there's land there that soaks it up. Now basically what it will mean is the situation will be detrimental because they'll actually be, because of the coverage of the houses, there'll be less land to soak up this water, which already has a, a, a flooding problem, even with all that land in any event. So I think that um, uh, an opportunity is missed here for, for our, our committee to actually do something in relation to this type of development. And if we don't start um, acting and using the policies we've got, then, then frankly, um, people will, will, will suffer and won't have uh, the appropriate garden space they need. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Higginson, quickly, Thank please. you, Madam Chairman. Yeah, we're dealing with it, with the merits of the case. There's no way in, on this earth you can't put two properties in that area that we were talking about. We were there yesterday. It's absolutely huge. And if a certain member of this committee was there yesterday, I know the comment wasn't there. Uh, so say, I know the comment that would be made in relation to what, um, the number of properties you've got to put there. So two is definitely feasible for my part. I, I, I did originally propose the uh, be accepted, and I support the, 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 the proposal and the second are in that. Councillor Harris. Uh, I'd just like some clarification on, on when we're talking about flooding, what we mean by flooding, please. My interpretation, Councillor Harris, is flooding is when you're thinking of a uh, floodplain, which is very different to where you're on a hill and you do get flash flooding. I mean, most of the members know where I live and we can get flash flooding down the one side of the garden, but that is very different to when you're 
presumably in when we're talking about building on a floodplain like the Wanister Road and places like that and the attenuation ponds are putting and it's always addressed. I think this is a different, completely different type of water course that we're talking about here this afternoon. And as was said yesterday, the number that would go on that plot if it was somewhere else, there would be at least six houses in there. So if you want to give any um, update on the flooding, Phil. Uh, no, I think we've been through it before. There's ways and means around avoiding flooding in that sort of surface water situation. And that's where your attenuation comes in, as Councillor Murphy and others have mentioned. So uh, that needs to be designed and engineered properly so that there's a greenfield runoff rate from this site, as I, as I also mentioned before. Well, Councillor Higginson and Councillor Murphy have moved for approval. Giles, oh, sorry, Giles, did you wish to comment? For yeah, Chair, for, if I may, as a, as a matter of procedure, Councillor Brown did move for refusal earlier, and I'm, I'm minded to go for that, not because I, I don't agree with the comments of Jim and other members that the site is capable of, 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 of taking two houses, possibly even more by modern standards, but it's, it's the issue of the flooding, and as Councillor Brown mentioned, siting is a material concern. We know the site is capable of, of hosting the house, but can it be can the surface water issue be mitigated sufficiently to to permit that and i think that should have been addressed at this stage even though it's in outline and not left to reserve matters so for that reason i'm going to second councillor brown's proposal right so i'll move that um councillor brown has moved for refusal of the application you have a seconder then in councillor howard howard could i have a show of hands for a refusal to the application please Thank you, Rob. And Councillor Murphy moved approval of the application. Do you have a seconder for approval, please, Councillor Murphy? Councillor Powell, show of hands for approval, please. Seven. Could you have a show of hands for abstentions, please? And there was one abstention, Just one. So that makes 13. So, Chairman, the application is approved. Right, thank you very much indeed, Rob. The lower cutting in. Yeah, yeah, subject to approval by the delegation panel. Yeah, you everybody in agreement yeah. with that? Yeah. yeah. Right, thank you. We now go on to page uh, 23 to 28, and this is Watery Lane, Monmouth. I will give my permission for you to remove your jacket, Councillor Dovey. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, Chair. You, Thanks. So this is another one we visited yesterday. It's a big, substantial, uh, got almost gothic-looking property on Watery Lane. So uh, it's within the development boundary of Monmouth, where residential development <coughs> is acceptable, subject to, to planning considerations. You can see that access onto the existing site is uh, over a uh, drainage ditch, so there's a, a culvert there. Uh, and that's looking back towards the property as you approach uh, from, from the uh, more popula populated part of the settlement. And that's looking into the very large curtilage. There's a magnificent willow tree there and various beautiful uh, mature specimens in the garden. And then it's looking a gap back, and the axis is sort of behind us, as we saw in that earlier photo, back towards the back of the property. Again, similar shot. And that's looking towards the back of the property as the willow tree again. And, and that's looking from the back of the property towards, towards the parent property. That's the back of the parent property. And that's the back garden again. It shows it in context, really, the size of the size of the plot. 
and then that shows where it is in relation to the settlement. So it's on the edge of the settlement as you're going out of it. There's actually two properties that have been built, which we saw in one of our design tours in the last six months, in either side of Glenfield. They're quite contemporary. There's some sort of setbacks like you're from Glen Glenfield in here. So that's something to remember in terms of, in terms of looking at this property as well. So the situation has changed. So that's the existing site. You can see the uh, large trees are circled there. Sorry, this is a bit slow. And that's the proposal suggesting how two properties could be located. Again, in outline, um, and it's suggesting the existing access is altered to uh, accommodate a shared drive with the existing property here. So they would have a parking arrangement here, which would be moved on, and then there would be parking for the property there, which is plot A. Block B would have its own separate access then well away from the parent property uh, with all the mature trees retained uh, within the, within the uh, curtilage of the existing property and the proposed properties. I think that's the last slide we've got, yeah. So uh, I'll leave it at that one. Um, in terms of consultations, highways have no objection. Again, it's relatively small numbers in terms of traffic generation. Uh, this parking can be provided on site without cre creating any parking problems on Watery Lane itself. There's the, the applicants demonstrate that there's sufficient privacy distances between the proposed dwellings and uh, the parent property and adjoining properties in that there's, as you can see at the back, there's uh, properties that are more concentrated, if you like, uh, in a cul-de-sac again at the back of the property, but there's sufficient privacy distances between the proposed uh, indicative dwellings and and those uh, new newer dwellings at the back. Uh, there's also a really a good line of vegetation which uh, is either to be retained or enhanced at the back, uh, as well as the important trees which are to be retained. Um, there's a surface water drainage condition that's uh, requested by uh, the, the highways uh, engineer who's uh, in charge of that particular aspect, uh, surface water drainage. Um, and we feel that the site is reasonable in terms of accommodating those two units. There's plenty of room on the plot. Um, what we are suggesting, um, and I know that the agent was, was discussed with the agent, but it actually doesn't come out in the report. And I think it's important that we actually um, put a, an informative down, which is separate to, the, to actually what's said in the report. In those locations there, I think because they're so close to the gardens of this property, that we're suggesting that those elements, if indeed the proposals come forward like this, because it is an outline, those elements would be uh, single storey, otherwise it would be quite obvious overlooking directly into their private amenity space. So I think we'd suggest that there's a, an informative to say that we wouldn't approve uh, two-storey projections like that as shown in the, that outline plan if any reserve matters are then submitted. So all in all, we, we uh, would recommend approval for the application. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. As this is an outline, that's simply down to the architect and yeah. uh, sorting that out. Right, um, most of us were there yesterday, so um, who's the first to comment, please? Councillor Murphy? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, again, it's a pity to uh, lose such, such a, <coughs> an open space, <coughs> but the precedent has been set uh, along there. Um, there is bags of, uh, of, of room. Um, I put myself in a position, what would, uh, uh, what would uh, an inspector s say on, on, a, on appeal? And he would clearly, he or she would, comp uh, would clearly uh, agree to it. I can't see any planning reasons whatsoever not to uh, approve it, so I recommend approval. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Blakeborough, then Councillor Higginson, Councillor Webb, and then Councillor Howard. Okay. Um, it's interesting that um, the officer suggested that um, the, the ability to um, build in gardens is seen as a as an opportunity and i kind of think the definition of the brownfield site and the lack of principles guidance policy set from Monmouthshire county council is what our approach to development in gardens acts as a loophole for people just to develop whatever they like and whenever they like um I, as i say i am concerned and i think you use the word um setting a precedent 
I think once that happens, we, we, I think we'll get a lot coming forward and we need to be prepared to deal with it um, because it's going to be very hard to say no um, because of the legislation. I was there and I have to admit when you look at the space, um, I think it could accommodate too, but again, um, when you're looking at the detail, I think we need to look at what Monmouthshire's need of housing is, rather than more five-bedroom houses. Again, looking at bungalows and smaller units uh, to, um, you know, enable um, young families to get on the ladder. So I will, uh, uh, I will support the approval of this. Sorry, uh, one thing I did omit to say again: there would be a contribution offsite to affordable housing uh, provision of over £50,000, based on uh, Shirley Wiggum's assessment. Thank you. Thank you for that, Phil. Um, I believe Councillor Higginson is next, please. Councillor Webb, then Councillor yeah. uh, You know, this application comes from the outline, outline Planning Commission with no detailed matters for consideration at this stage. So we're just looking at the fact that we don't put two properties there. And, you know, we talk about precedents, and they went back over a number of years, probably before I actually came on this council, and as 1999. So I'm quite prepared to second the uh, proposal. I think it's a proposal made by Councillor Murphy that we allow those properties, or the outline planning permission for two properties. Thank you very much, Councillor Higgins. Councillor Webb, next, please. What was that? What? It's, it's a subject, Section 106 agreement. Yeah. Councillor Howard? Yeah. I think this site is, is a complete contrast to the other one for me, and it's quite appropriate to subdivide it and provide two new dwellings, and the amount of amenity space left for the existing houses is more than ample. Um, so, yes, I'm happy to second, third. Thank you. Councillor Roger Harris, then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to remind us all, and I've been on this planning committee for 13 years, we have had hundreds, literally hundreds of applications where we've been looking in back gardens um, as to whether or not we put um, properties on, and there are very few, probably count them on one or two hands that we've actually turned down for whatever reason so uh, you know it's just been ongoing and it will be ongoing uh, forever I'm sure thank you madam chair thank you Councillor Harris I know I've been here as long as you on the planning committee and there were some in Monmouth itself that we refused and the inspector then um, put them in so uh, you know you, you've got it you, yeah uh, yes definitely I didn't like to mention where it was <laughs> But the thing is, we have to deal with what's in front of us here now today. Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I think this, this particular plot has um, less of a problem than the other one that we've um, just discussed because of the fact that um, it impacts the neighbours um, less than the others, although in terms of the principle, I'm, I'm not um, obviously in favour of gardens being used, used in this way because I think it's Im important to maintain them. But uh, having said that, this, this plot is actually uh, more suitable than the uh, previous one. Um, but uh, on the whole, I'm not in favour of these type of applications, but... Um, I think um, in, in, this, in this instance, um, I think it causes uh, less neighbour problems than the previous one did. And, and I was talking in the previous one about the scaling and, and mass in relation to what um, previous properties, uh, pro properties in the surrounding area were like. Thank you. Councillor Alan Davis. Thank you, Chair. I see no issues at all in relation to this application. It's a, it's a big site. It can handle the two houses, no problem. And I think we should move approval, at, as Councillor Higginson says. And well, it is in the town boundary, and we are never going to make more land. And we're going to have more and more pressure on us for this, for more sites, and there's more and more people that have to be housed. And so, you know, I think we would be... Um, yes, we all like a nice garden. Not everybody wants a big garden. And on any new estates that are built today, they would have 
10 houses on that, I expect, and, and you cannot just build anywhere in the countryside, so we are under pressure to build more housing for the, for the demand that we have to meet in the county. So um, I believe Councillor Higginson moved approval, did you, or was it Councillor Murphy? Councillor Murphy, do you have a second of Councillor yeah, Murphy? Second, yeah, I'm Right, Councillor Higginson, second of show of hands for approval, please. Those against the application, abstention, Councillor Clark. To to, to abstention. Approaching. Right. Thank you very much we'll indeed. Right. Right, now we go to page uh, 29, and this is in Mega 00257. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is one we looked at uh, at the end of yesterday's site visit. It's down on the levels. Uh, it's down off... Um, uh, it's, it's below Black uh, Blackwall Stud, which is a uh, horsey culture sort of uh, setup. So this is land that's owned by that uh, gentleman, and he's... Uh, given that land to his daughter and son-in-law to um, to uh, run a sort of stable, come uh, horsey culture sort of place there. So there are existing buildings on that have been there for I think they said around 12 years plus, and they they obviously looked as if they were there for some time. Uh, that's Blackwall Stud itself, sorry. So that's further up. The site we were looking at is much further south than that. Uh, again, that's Blackwall Stud. Um, so. Yeah, so Blackwall Stud is in this sort of corner, and then this site is down here, so we have to drive down that very rutted sort of... Uh, sorry, there's Blackwall Stud there. That's the Laban came down. There's Blackwall Stud, so the one we were in, I think, was in, so in this, this area or this area. It'll become clear now. It's a yeah, there it is. Yeah, so there's Blackwall Stud up there, and then it's all the way down here. The so that was the existing there. building that had been there for a long time. It's like a Dutch barn. Uh, they built a stable, unwittingly without planning permission, had the containers there. There was a discussion about whether they, they, they needed permission for it, which they were ignorant as to whether they did, because they, it wasn't on any foundations. Uh, but, uh, like, you know, our enforcement team went out there and advised them they did need planning permission, because the degree of permanence of them, they weren't going to be moving these, the stable or the containers around. So the stables were up there in the northern part of the site. Um, uh, and yeah, which is there, it's containers here, that was the existing building which is uh, lawful and then they wanted to build two stables down there identical to the, uh, the stable block there and retention of the big security gates there to stop break-ins because they've had problems as they described on site with people trying to break into the steel containers uh, because it's isolated. So. Um, in terms of planning, it's, it's, it's on the levels. There's a lot of sort of agricultural or horsey culture, equestrian type uses in that area. So it sort of fits the, um, fits the general character of the area. Uh, the reason it's before you is because the uh, NRW requested a flood cons consequences assessment. That's a very technical document. It does cost rather a lot of money to, to put together. And we weighed it up as officers as to whether we would ask for that. And bear in mind, it's stables. It's not living accommodation. It's not, um, if it floods, there'll be lots of warning because it's actually defended by the seawall uh, and they can get the animals out quickly. We said that that was unreasonable to ask for that in this instance. So uh, we've recommended approval for it in the absence of the flood consequences assessment, and we're happy to do so. This won't uh, have any... Uh, significant impact on any flooding elsewhere. It's minimal in terms of the um, intervention on the site and loss of flood storage. So, uh, so uh, um, we're happy to recommend approval. I think that's the last slide. Well, that's the internal parts of the stables and that's the, those are the steel gates. So we'd recommend approval for, the, for that application. Thank you very much, Phil. And there was a ring each side, the road, and the road itself, well, you won't 
going to travel too fast along it. You're better on horseback, I should imagine. It'd be much better. Uh, Councillor Higginson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. We travel that road thousands of times adjacent road we didn't know it was there so uh, but I, I think it's acceptable and I, I just I just leave it at that yeah I, I, the, the, those stables are absolutely fantastic uh, in, the, in the way they've been built the materials etc so they are not a problem to anyone there's no near neighbours thank you councillor Kins. councillor Roger Harris and then councillor Brown thank you madam chair yes please will they paint the the gates green as soon as possible. I noticed uh, that we said the gates should be put up within five months, but they're there three months, of it, whatever it is, they're there already. It would look better um, painted uh, green. And I'm not sure if the uh, applicants are, are aware of the lethal weapons they've got on top of their uh, uh, their gates, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how lawful that is, but that's not our problem. Thank, Thank you. Councilor. Sorry, can I just comment. Yeah, I think highways have made the comment without necessarily visiting the site, so they didn't note at the time that the actual gates are in situ. Uh, so I think uh, we'll uh, amend condition three, I think it is, on the report to say that the gates need to be painted dark green within three months of, t of the date of permission, rather than they be set back five metres because they already are set back into the site. They've got the minibus in front of the site, so it was off the lane anyway. So uh, there's no need to uh, set it back. Councillor Brown, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. I think this is, myself, a, a delightful development and um, I'd certainly uh, support it. And I think it's, um, you know, the, the children who, who ride there certainly benefit um, from this site. And that's really all I've got to say on it. Thank you. Thank you. Can Councillor Feekin. Uh, just going back to the gates and the drawing that's presented in front of us. Um, it shows the spikes on the gates. Are we therefore not, not going, if we're not careful, to permit those spikes, whether they're lawful or not lawful, um, and therefore creating some sort of lawfulness by permitted, uh, by permission? I, yeah, I, I don't think it, it is a... Um, a planning issue as such members um, but it certainly is a matter um, for the owner of that property I, I've, I've not been to the site so I don't know what these spikes look like but uh, there is an element of reasonableness in protection of your property um, so it's something that the the owner of the site um, should make him or herself aware of thank you I think yesterday I am um, I spoke to the lady there and I made her aware that I wasn't comfortable with that degree. I know they've had breakings, but I really did think that uh, how they would come off with somebody being impaled on them. Um, well, I mean, I think it was rather a little bit beyond what was necessary. Yeah, it was excessive. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And to aid Rob, if you look at the plans, those, um, those spikes sticking out at the the top look quite long compared to the rest of it. I can assure you they are that long, in, in the, about this long, and uh, and dagger-like. Having said that, there's a very large sign saying don't climb o over these, and if you do, you do it a at your own risk. I'm not sure quite how uh, legal that, 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 that is, but nevertheless, they have put a large uh, sign up. Um, no, Chair, I've got no problems with this at all. It's already been recommended for approval. I'm happy to second. Thank you. I'm just hopeful that all those that can read, and it does attract children there, that, you know, it, it was, it gave me great concern, actually, to see those spikes on the top as they were. But as we say, it's not a planning matter, but I think it could be highlighted to the applicant that we have had concerns about it. It wasn't like razor wire. They were very hideous looking spikes that you could become impaled if you were trying to get, climb over the gate. Councillor Howard. Yeah, I'm happy with it as well. But just, just on that point there, is it possible we could add some kind of informative note just to suggest that anything, maybe or another method of protecting the property that keeps within the, the overall mass and design of the gate might be acceptable? If you didn't get over the gate, you'd fall in the rain anyway. 
Um, do you, right, need get, so, you need a ladder anyway? Yes. Uh, counts, uh, who moved that? Councillor Murphy or oh, Councillor Higginson? Yeah. Right, your seconder, Councillor Murphy, of show of hands for approval, please. Uh, that's unanimously approved, Chair. Right. Uh, apart from one abstention, sorry. Yes, because yeah. Councillor yeah. Clark wasn't with us yeah. at the site visits yeah. yesterday. If anybody is out there wondering why Councillor uh, Clark has not. Uh, voted for or against it simply because he wasn't with us on the site visits yesterday. Thank you. We now page 33 and this little mill ask. That's application 0044. Okay, thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, yeah. Phil, can you? Sorry, I was just writing a note. Have the gates. Okay, so this is a full application relating to a, a complex of buildings known as New House Farm. Uh, Jouet's located just outside Little Mill off the A472, uh, and, and the buildings are accessed via a well, very long private driveway, approximately 800 metres long. Um, so just to quickly run through the photographs, uh, this is on the drawings known as Barn 2, uh, mostly red brick barn. This is taken from within the courtyard. Um, this is to the rear of barn two. You can see there's the pig, the pig, the pigsty there, the sort of lean-to structure. Yeah. Yep. And what's that? That's I think that's the side rear of the smaller barn known as barn one. Uh, yeah, which was previously a stable. And I think there's some just that's the front of the former stable building. I think there's just one of the view from the opposite side there showing the. Uh, the lean to on the back. So um, it's also worth quickly pointing out that the application is only presented before members today uh, as the applicant is a member of the planning department. Um, so the permission um, is to convert the buildings to residential use. Uh, the barns are a traditional stone, uh, mostly red brick structures, um, which are no longer suitable for agricultural use given sort of current farming practice. The buildings have been subject to structural appraisals and are considered to be in fair condition and capable for conversion. Um, no extensions to the existing footprints are proposed. Phil just pointed out there you can see the, slight, the elements that slightly stick out slightly from barn one. Yeah, but they are, that is an existing footprint, so the footprints uh, wouldn't be increased. Uh, the walls of a former piggery would be raised, however, to create a usable single story lean to. Um, and as we saw yesterday, only very limited new openings will be required. Uh, materials, uh, as you'd expect, are traditional with timber joinery, slate roofs on the main elevation. With a shallower single storey, these would be uh, colour-coated steel sheeting, uh, typical of sort of agricultural buildings and is considered to be acceptable. Um, as you're aware from yesterday's visit, the barns are sited around an existing sort of concrete uh, hard surface courtyard uh, that also serves the main farmhouse and this area would provide the parking and turkey prov turning provision uh, which is considered to be suitable for the scale of the development. Um, bat surveys have been undertaken in support of the application. Uh, further survey work has only just been completed um, at the request of NRW and our MCC's own ecologists um, and Further mitigation conditions will have to be considered uh, once we've consulted NRW and our own ecologists with that in new updated information. Um, and as we've discussed previously, it, it is formation of new dwellings, so an affordable housing contribution would be required. Uh, for the larger barn, this would be uh, a sum secured by 106 of £24,485, and for the smaller barn, a sum of £16,420. So subject to this 106 agreement and the conditions that are set out in the officer reports, including the, uh, the updated mitigation for BATS conditions, uh, it's presented to members with a recommendation for approval. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Councillor Davis first, Councillor Brown, Councillor Brakebra at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I saw no issues at all with this application. Beautiful location place I'd like to live myself actually so so I would propose approval of that application thank you, thank you. Councillor Brown next I believe yeah thank you yeah I, have, I don't have any difficulty with this application um, I did read somewhere and perhaps the officers can tell me if I was a mistake or not that um, 
uh, redundant um, barn, barns and that type of uh, dwellings. They have to be in disuse for at least five years. I think it's said there somewhere, but the report doesn't actually refer to how long they've been disused for. So I just wondered if you'd be able to let me know what that is. Thank you. I think in terms of being used actively for agriculture, it, it's longer than the four years. Um, I just got the, oh, five, uh, five years, sorry. You just get the policy yeah, up on my screen. Um, uh, sorry, just quickly reading the uh, criteria in the policy. Yeah, it, it's sort of that's perhaps referring more to modern buildings where there's a concern, but where it says other buildings that have been used for their intended purpose for a significant period of time, clearly in this case, its original purpose, it has been used for that original agricultural uh, and stabling purpose for a significant pe period of time. So it is considered to meet uh, the H4 conversion policy on that, that point. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Blakeborough? Um, yeah, it ju just uh, first to say that um, Councillor Val Smith, who was the ward member, did for me this morning to say that they've got her full support. Um, again, for me, there is no planning reasons to refuse it. And it's a really good use of some beautiful buildings to, to create some beautiful homes. Um, and yeah, the added advantage of the 41,106 money contribution is also good. Thank you. Anybody else wish to comment? Phil, no. Quite happy to second a, a, a movement for approval, Chair. Right. There's one thing I'd like to raise. I know they say about agricultural sheeting on buildings, this is no longer going to be in agriculture, and I don't see why we couldn't have continued it in slate, because it is now um, not going to be in agriculture, it's going to be a dwelling, and to have a sheeted roof on top of you, I just don't like it. But uh, perhaps that's my preference. Um, I don't know if anybody else is of the like mind, but I certainly uh, uh, don't. I think that's a matter of taste, because yeah. I think the architect tried to provide an element of uh, the sort of original rural, rural character of the, of, the, of the building. And I know that... Uh, well mm -hmm. So also, because it's got a shallow pitch with natural slate, you've got to have a certain degree pitch as well. So obviously with, with yeah. the, the metal sheeting, you know, it overcomes that issue as well. So I think it's a practical decision rather than perhaps yeah. an aesthetic one. Right. Thank you. I know it's quite trendy if you watch uh, any design programmes and so on. It's not like the galvanite sheeting that we had years ago on no. agricultural buildings anyway. No. So uh, I believe somebody moved for approval. Councillor Davis, you have a second. Uh, Councillor Murphy, show of hands for approval, please. That's unanimous, uh, apart from one abstention one of council. Thank you. Do you want to mention the appeals? Yes, yeah. we have some appeals. Uh, Phil, would you want yeah. to mention the appeals? Do you want to do the White House? Do you, want, you know that one? Um, yeah, I do. Well, you can say what the issues were, really. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to go into detail about the delegate panel. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the planning thing, planning merits of it. <laughs> Yeah, the, the first appeal was uh, actually against non-determination for an extension to an existing uh, agricultural building. Um, I think, well, there's a few issues with this, but um, the delegated panel went to site, um, I think it was due to ground conditions, perhaps members can confirm that, that they didn't actually visit the site, uh, and prior to a subsequent site visit, uh, the appeal was lodged against non-determination, and the inspector found well, there were some differences with, with the plans proposed uh, that the, in principle, the extension to the ag agricultural building was acceptable, so... Was it a retention of? It was retention of, right. yeah. Right, OK. They, they, I think the building had been yeah. subject to some damage and were extended, um, and, I say, before the panel could go back, it was appealed, so that's why it wasn't mm. done under the, the delegated panel. Mm. Thank yes. you. Sorry, on the other one, which was Caxton Tower, I don't know whether the mem members know this, it's quite... Almost like a folly on top of the uh, hill, looking towards the sort of Rockfield Way, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in Ruth's ward, um, we've had a few enforcement issues with this, and they've not actually they've got permission to actually convert and uh, extend to some extent the the original tower, and they've not done any of that. They've just built an outbuilding in the grounds of it, um, and we we took um, we took uh, enforcement action. 
um, successfully against some unauthorised work they'd done to the outbuilding, which was much larger, I think, than originally. It was a, it, uh, yeah. with Sorry. clarity, it was a service building because yeah. it was quite away from Garaging the main road, and, uh, and, yeah. and uh, there was no water out of yeah. so they built quite a large service yeah. building to it. I think um, the fear was we were going to live in that um, and not bother doing the tower. Yeah. So, uh, we, so we successfully took enforcement action against that. They came in with some revised scheme, um, and I think, to be honest, the, the officer wasn't entirely confident with his approach, but um, they were raising the approved drawing by 400 mils at eaves level, and we felt it made the building look weaker <coughs> and the roof was shallower. So we felt, proportionately, it wasn't a very good scheme. Um, but anyway, they appealed that, and they, 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 the inspector sympathised with the appellants in that particular instance. Uh, so they have got permission to adapt the outbuilding as they've now proposed, but it is, it's not bigger, it's not bigger than it was originally, I think. I, I think uh, that the footprint was the same, proof. I can look straight at it every yeah. day. It's a very large, uh, dilapidated tower, and without the tower, they wouldn't have had yeah. permission for the, the okay. service building. Yeah. But it was the roof on it was very tall, and I believe they more or less made it into a dwelling. And then at Easter, Good Friday, the roof came off, it came down, and by Monday, the new roof was on it, but it's nothing like as high as, as what they had you know, originally built there. So it, it isn't, it, you saw this big building and it overshadowed the tower, mm. and it did affect the visibility of the tower. Mm. I now, I think I can declare the meeting closed, and thank you all very much for your good attendance, and uh, look forward to some more planning.